Good morning, folks. Been an all-quiet event on the earth-facing half of the sun since that big filament ripped away. The thin dark ropes are the remaining plasma filaments, and they present the main eruption threat for another couple days. Big ones down south, stretching across latitude lines there. If you will recall the sunspot situation yesterday, you know why those filaments sit in the top watch spot right now, and you're not surprised to see pitiful solar flaring. Looking at the sunspots again today reveals almost nothing. Tiny umbras illuminated only by the magnetogram a couple of places here. But on the limb, we have some umbras just now becoming visible, still days away from geo-effective space weather position. We're seeing a bit of increased pressure this morning in the solar wind, mostly a jump up in speed and plasma temperature. But coming on the heels of the sector boundary, our shield is already up and fighting back, and this minor perturbation isn't going to be enough to catch her off guard this morning. Faster streams are expected soon. They'd be coming from the now departing coronal holes. And you can see another one just behind them on the equator. And while it appears to be part of that northern grouping, even with the same level of force, it is actually the extension of the southern polar opening should face us in a couple days. Seismicity took a back seat to volcano activity recently. Sinabung's eruption Tuesday night has been followed by major activity and raised alert levels at two different volcanoes in the vicinity. All the while, quakes didn't exactly take the whole day off. A very unusual tremor in Norway caught my attention, despite its low magnitude. While we're at RSOE, we also had a non-Fukushima radiation issue in Japan where three workers accidentally got splashed with radioactive water. Come on, guys. Fans of star water, you already know Pluto is 75% water ice, but now Horizons is giving us images of the polar cap. Great article and photo linked below with lots more coming this summer. Our favorite climate change duo tagged a third wheel on for the latest temperature data, which once again decreases the temperature trend towards something that more reflects reality. Interesting note, the newest data shows that not only is the global warming pause nearly 20 years long, but we are riding right now at the peak of the 1988 temperatures 27 years ago. And if you feel like looking at multiple layers of the atmosphere, we've got half warming, half cooling, with the largest trend of all being a cool down. By now you might have also heard about the Russian resupply ship that the ISS will likely be missing. It is indeed lost for good and will re-enter our atmosphere soon. Last article for you is by New Star. We're illuminating the X-ray signatures that have been elusive to our lower energy detectors thus far. I'd also like to mention that we are about to start a crazy month for planetary geometry. The heliocentric and geocentric lineups will be playing a role most significantly at the start and end of the month. I'll have a full deeper look episode on this month's planet soon, but suffice to say that at the start here, we may be seeing an end to this lack of flaring and a resurgence of activity. Speaking of deeper looks, the planet's video is just one of two I've got set to post for you guys in the next two days. Last night we posted an Earth Flares update highly relevant to the Earth Spots material, which you should probably watch first. 40 episodes down, folks. So while we have been watching a mega filament and checking in on Nepal, this cyclone got absurdly powerful. We can see the penumbral lines to this Earth Spot clearly, but I am happy to report it will weaken before hitting landfall to the south-southeast, which it will do this weekend. I'm also going to be hoping that the flooding off this convergence line that cuts through, then up across Europe, will not be as bad as I think it's going to be, multiple systems combining to make that storm. Last and least is the west, Pacific moisture coming on shore to meet that convergence there, while the low off the east coast is actually regulating some air mass interaction up to the right as well. None of these alerts should be too bad, not for another few days at least. Got a bit of a water focus in the current conditions, then shots of our star to close. Website members, deeper look time, and I've got two more for you coming soon. Eyes open, no fear, at 6.05 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.